So we referenced a file that doesn't exist, which is the sketch.js file. And that's where we're really going to be doing most of our work today. So I'm going to open up a new window or a new file and save this as. So this is sketch.js. And so now we have four files. And these are kind of the main four files that you're going to see in all of our projects, the index.html page, the style.css page, the p5.min, and then sketch.js. And so we're going to be creating our first sketch and also introducing JavaScript syntax. And so there's a lot of things that are going to be happening at the same time in this video. Um, some things might not make sense at first, but as we repeat them throughout the semester, you'll start to get the hang of them. So we're going to start actually with some code that is not really code, which is called a comment. And uh, there's a couple different ways to write a comment. This, this comment that I'm going to do is called a multi-line comment because I can write as many lines as I want. And we've seen this in CSS and HTML before. It's basically just part of our code that um, is not actually read or interpreted by the browser. So in JavaScript, the way I make a comment is I start with a forward slash and I put an asterisk. And then I can write anything I want, da da da. And then at the end, I have another asterisk and then a, a, a forward slash again. So this one is a mirror of this one. Um, and anything in between there, I can write, and it's just going to be ignored by my program. So it doesn't really matter what I write here. So I'm going to just say, um, this is my self-portrait version uh, one. And um, I'll say, you know, this is by Owen Roberts. Um, I could say uh, really anything I want here that just kind of explains uh, what's going on in this sketch. That's a multi-line comment. I can also use single line comments, which is just two slashes, but I can only do, do one line. So I'll be using those as well. And so now we're actually going to get started with P5. In P5, there's uh, two sort of main components that happen. There's the setup, uh, which sets up our program. And then there's the draw function, which basically draws our graphics. Um, and if you've ever played any video games, you've probably heard of the term FPS or frames per second. And basically all computer programs run a certain frames per second. And they'll probably run, the browser is trying to run about 60 frames per second. And so it's running very fast. It's repainting all of our artwork over and over again. Um, and so that, because it's going so fast, if we do things like move elements in our scene, it's going to look like it's animating, like in real life, as opposed to, you know, just changing from one place to another, which is actually what's happening. Um, and so that's how we get animation and transitions between scenes and other things like that. We're going to start with our setup function. And so we start with the word function. Pretty much every program is going to have that word in there somewhere. It basically just means, uh, you know, this does something. So it's a little bit like uh, a series of events or a recipe. Um, we're basically asking the program to do what's inside of this function. Uh, and the first function we want to do is called setup. Try that again, setup. Okay, so setup is basically just um, a, a function that P5 creates for us, or we create it, but P5 runs it for us. Um, and it sets up some basic components of our sketch. Um, function names, like setup, are followed by parentheses. Um, and sometimes stuff goes in the parentheses, but uh, we'll get to that very soon. Um, and then for a function, if we're creating the function, which we're doing here, it's going to be followed by curly brackets like what you see in CSS. And everything that goes in between those two curly brackets is what happens when the function gets run. And so when we set up our program, there's really only like one thing that we're going to do to start. And a lot of this stuff is going to be like kind of confusing at the beginning, but as we get to use it, um, we'll kind of understand more and more why we're using it. So the first thing that happens in our uh, setup function is that we want to make a canvas. Um, so we're going to say create canvas. And then this version, OK, so this and so create canvas is also a function, but it doesn't have the word function before it because it's already been sort of defined and it, it already does something. We just kind of tell us tell it when we want it to happen. Um, so functions can go inside of other functions. Um, and so when we're calling a function like this, we're sort of telling it to run now, as opposed to setup. Setup, we're, we're sort of defining it. We're sort of creating what happens when setup is called. And P5 actually calls setup for us. So in the create canvas, we actually do put something in between the parentheses, which is how big we want the canvas to be. 
Um, and we can put whatever numbers we want in there, uh, but it's actually gonna set up a canvas with, that has that number of pixels. Uh, the first number, whatever we do, is it's gonna be that number of pixels wide. And the second number, that'll be the height. So if I do like 100 by 100, and then I refresh the page, we can't see it right now because we haven't drawn anything on it yet, but you can see that P5 added this little main section down here. And then if we open that up, you can see a canvas and you can see how big it is on the page by highlighting it in CSS. We can see the width is 100 pixels and the height is 100 pixels. There's a few other things that P5 has added in here like the ID and the class. Um, we're not really gonna need those for now, um, but it's good to know that they're there. Um, so now we have this canvas. We are gonna draw something on this, so let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, we can make it like uh, maybe uh, let's make it like 600 pixels uh, by maybe 300 pixels. So it'll be a bit wider than it is tall. That might be a good canvas. We could actually make it a bit bigger than that. Let's do um, 640 by, let's say, 360. Okay, so that's a nice canvas size. That'll give us some space to work with. Um, but we don't actually see anything on the canvas. Um, so we will get into that. Let's talk a little bit about what the canvas is first. So if I uh, go to MDN and say canvas, uh, we're gonna look at this is what the canvas is. And it's basically just a rendering engine um, for the browser. So normally in an HTML element, we just have like text or you know um, a link or a menu. You know, these are kind of normal things. But if we wanna draw some graphics to make like a video game, um, we're gonna need something to draw those graphics on. And that's what we use the canvas for. So a canvas is sort of like, you know, a canvas for painting or something like that. Um, but it allows us to do some graphics. So in MDN, we're seeing, you know, this is uh, the canvas just with some, you know, basic stuff in it. Uh, here's the canvas grid. Here's drawing some rectangles. Smiley face down here. So there's some stuff we can draw with a canvas. Here's designing a game. So there's a lot of different stuff we can do with the canvas. Um, there's also like 3D stuff we can do. Let's see if there's any, uh, here's some animations. So we can animate with the canvas. These are all some basic stuff. Uh, P5 also allows us to do this stuff in a slightly more um, easy way. Here's an interactive example. So it's basically just a graphics engine. It let us draw shapes and colors and it gets very sophisticated. So eventually we get to things like if we look at the 3JS website, um, you'll get to much more sophisticated uh, 3D things. Let's see if there's a good example. This is a website that uses the canvas and it's a 3D uh, sort of interactive animation that is used for this person's uh, like portfolio. Um, and so these kind of graphics normally wouldn't be able to exist on a website. You'd have to have, you know, a, a, for uh, some kind of video game or some kind of other graphics engine. Uh, but what the canvas does is a, allows us to draw any types of graphics that we want. Um, so that's sort of a more sophisticated version of what you can do with the, camp the canvas. Um, so there's our canvas. We're going to be using it to doing some drawings um, and also, you know, interacting with the browser. So let's go back into our Sublime. So that's our setup function. We're going to do more with this in the future, but for now, that's really all we have to do. The function that we really want to use is the draw function. So after this, I'm going to do function and then draw. And it looks exactly the same thing as setup, but it does something different. It's drawing our graphics. We can draw something really simple just to start, which is just a background. So I'll just say background, and I'll just give this a color, uh, like um, let's give it something different than our, our CSS background. So let's make it green. And so there we go. Now we're drawing this green background on our canvas. And so then we can draw stuff on top of that. We're using more functions, kind of like create canvas, except we're gonna be using these functions to draw colors and shapes and other things. So I wanna point out one more thing about the canvas and then we're gonna make, we're gonna look at some new functions that we can use. So uh, in our canvas, um, there's a coordinate system. And you may have heard of the term coordinate system before. And what you probably did in math at some point is use a, Corti a Cartesian coordinate system. And in that coordinate system, you'll have uh, your x-axis 
and your y-axis, and in the middle is what we call zero, zero. That's the origin. So here's the x-axis going this way. Um, so x is positive in this direction, negative in this direction. And then you'll have your y-axis, which is usually positive going this way and negative going this way. And then zero, zero is called the origin. And if you want to plot like a line or something like that, you know, or if you want to do like cosine or, you know, whatever, um, you do that starting from the center. Okay, so uh, that's uh, a, court a Cartesian coordinate system. You know, you count up one, two, three, four, five on X and up on Y. Uh, and P5 uses something similar, but it's slightly different. It's more similar to how computer graphics work as opposed to how we, you know, tend to draw things in math. And so in P5, the origin is actually up here in the top left. So the origin is the top left part of the canvas. And the x-axis starts at zero right here, and it goes uh, positive in this direction. And so whatever this width is that we set in our code, uh, 640, that's going to be 640x, and this is 0x. And then y is zero up here. And then we draw down until we get to uh, 360. So the uh, P5 uh, coordinate system is a little bit different in that we start at 0, 0, and then the X is always positive when we're all on the canvas, and Y is also always positive. But the tricky part is that Y, you would think that Y would get bigger as you go up the page, but it's actually the opposite. Y starts at zero at the top of the page, and it gets bigger as we go down. If you've ever done CSS positioning with top, left, right, and bottom, you might be familiar with this system already, um, but many of you probably haven't uh, used that in the past. Um, so I'll continue to talk about the coordinate system in P5 as we go through the semester, but it's important just to um, go over that to start. So I'll turn that off, and I'm just going to go over some basic functions. And uh, P5 has a reference page, so it's good to always have the P5 website open. And if we go down to reference, uh, you can see all of the different things that we can do in the reference. So we're just going to start with some basic shapes in this part of the video. So I'll click on shape. Uh, and so we can see some basic shapes, um, the circle, the uh, square, rectangle, triangle, etc. So, so again, these are built in P5 uh, functions. So let's just start with a circle. That's pretty easy to do. So if I do circle, the circle, by just saying circle here, it's already decided by P5 that that's a function. So I don't have to do function circle. I can just write circle just like I wrote background. Um, and so I can just write a circle. And then I need uh, basically three arguments with a circle to draw it on the screen. So if I, if I forget what those are, I can click on circle. And I can see an example of it. Here is the circle with some arguments. And then I can scroll down and say, what do I need? I need the x position, the y position, and then d stands for diameter or uh, you know the width and height of the circle. So um, if I go to my circle and I put at 0 for x, comma 0 for y, and let's put 100 for the diameter, you can guess where that would be um, if you want to pause the video and take a guess. Um, so I'm just going to save that and then go to Chrome and reload. And there we go. There's our circle. So 0, 0 is the top left. And we can only see a little bit of our circle. So we can tell that uh, the circle is actually being drawn from the middle. And so if we want to move our circle onto the scene, we have to increase the x value because x gets positive in this direction. So let's increase the x to like 100. OK, so we moved over a bit on x, 100 pixels this way. And let's try to move down a little bit. So maybe I'll increase y to 200. And so that's how we can kind of like position our circle around. So if we're building a self-portrait, the circle might be, you know, some eyes. So I might want to make another circle. So I could copy this circle and paste it and move over. So if I want an eye next to this one, I got to move over this direction. So I'll move this guy over like 200. And there we go, they're right next to each other. And the reason they're right next to each other is because they're both 100 pixels wide. And if we do 200 minus 100, we get 100 pixels. So there's 100x, there's 200x, and the difference is the same as 
you know, the width of our circles. We could move it over a little bit more if we want a little space between the two eyes. And then if we wanted to move both of them, we have to change both of these numbers in equal proportion. So let's say I want to move these eyes like uh, up here. So I'd have to move uh, the first eye, let's go to like 400. Okay, so that's good. And so the second eye, I added 300. So let's add 300 there. So that'll be 500. Okay. And then if I want to go up on the Y, so if I want to go in this direction, I have to subtract because Y starts at zero. So if this is 200, then around here is like in between 200 and zero. So it's going to be less than 200. So let's try 100. Okay, so now my eyes are up there. So those are the eyes. Uh, and so there's a couple different types of shapes. So with circles, uh, there's an origin in the middle, and then the diameter is the width and the height of the circle. Um, there's also uh, the square. So if I do a square, uh, maybe I'll make the nose for my self-portrait a square. Um, so I'll put it at like, it's gonna be at least 400 because um, that's where this first eye is and it's gonna be let's make it like 50 or no it's gonna have to be below a hundred so let's make it like 150 on the y-axis and then let's make it 50 pixels wide okay so our square is a little bit off for the nose um, because since the circle draws in the middle we can see that this square actually draws from the top left so it's a little bit different, it's kind of confusing. The circle draws from the middle, the square starts here and then goes width and height. Um, so if we wanna move the square over, we've gotta increase uh, that, okay. And then I can also uh, make the square, right now with the square, I only have like the width and height. If I change this to rectangle, I can actually make the width and height different. So I could have like 100 by 50. Okay, so maybe that you know is the beginning of the nose. With a square, another thing I can do that's kind of fun is I can add a little bit of rounded corners. Okay, so I can add some corners here um, to my nose. And then I can move it down a little bit if I want to on the Y. And starting to actually look a bit more like a mouth at this point, so maybe we'll come back. With the circle, we also have something called an ellipse. So if I take one of these eyes and I change it to an ellipse, now I can leave it as a circle or I can actually do something similar where I change the width and the height. Okay, so now I have a self-portrait where he's kind of like blinking a little bit. And I'm gonna move this rectangle back a little bit. Okay, so now we have a little bit more going on there. So we have a circle, an ellipse, and a rectangle. And all of these are uh, shapes where the first two values are the X and Y position and the second value or two values are the width and height, the size of the shape. Another type of shape which just use the points. So for example, um, something I might want to do with my self-portrait is make some like hair. And something I would want to do for that is maybe use a line. And a line doesn't have a width uh, or a height, so it just uses two points. So it, it connects this point to this point, um, and you just give it those two points, so x1, y1, and x2, y2. And so we can see uh, down here the line with x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's do a little bit of hair. Now that I have like some a bunch of different shapes going on, here's a good chance to use some comments. So I'm gonna put a comment up here and just say these are the eyes, just so I know, because like circle doesn't really tell me it's an eye. But if I put a couple slashes and then write eyes, then I know, okay, this is you know one of the eyes and this is another eye. And then for the rectangle, I can put mouth here. Um, and I can also put a comment at the end of the line if I want to. So my circle is the left eye, so I can say left. And the ellipse is the right eye. So that gives me some you know notes about what's happening in my code that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to make updates or changes in the future. Okay. So now we have the mouth, and let's add some hair. So I'm gonna use some lines to do that. So I'll just add some like hair up here. I'm gonna actually move stuff down a little bit to give myself a bit more space. So let's move the eyes to like 150, and the mouth to 
to like 250, I guess. Okay, so then the hair, um, I'll do a little bit above the eyes, so that might be at like 100, so I'll do a line. So I'll do like, uh, we'll start with the X. So this X is gonna be somewhere around 400. So I'll say, for the line, I'll say 400. And for the Y, uh, that's gonna be about 100. And then to make it a line, I have to move some value. If I just have two of the same points, it's just a dot. Um, so let's move the X over a little bit. So we'll say like 410. And we'll move the Y a bit. So we'll say like 80. And so we got a little hair strand. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. I'll go over how to make that a little bit more visible in the second part of the video. Um, right now we're just working with these default colors, which is white and black, but we are going to change that in the second part of the video. Okay, so let's move the hair up a bit. So we're going to have to move both of these Y values up. So I'll just move this one up first. I'll make that like 60. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, maybe I'll make it like 40, so there's a little bit more distance there. And then maybe I'll make this one like 430, so it's moving over a bit. Uh, and so yeah, I can just like copy that to make some more hair. So I'll just like copy this and then paste a couple times and then I'll just have to move the values over. So this is a little tedious if you're doing like a bunch of different shapes. We are gonna look at cool ways to do uh, easier versions of this in the future. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of move these X values over one at a time. So uh, we'll start with like going to uh, maybe 420 and 450 okay so that's another hair and then I'll just keep adding 20 to each one 440 470 and 460 and uh, 490 and then 480 and this would go to 510 so I'm just adding 20 pixels to each one and so this goes up to 500 on the X, and this goes to 530. And so this is very rigid. If you wanted to make it different, you could do like slightly different values each time so that they don't all look the same. Um, and the hair, so at this point I'm realizing the hair kind of went past the face a little bit, um, but it's easier to move these shapes than it is to move all of these. So let's just move the eyes a bit over, so I'll do like 430 and 550, and I'll move the mouth over 450, something like that. So a lot of this, when we're designing the self-portrait, is just kind of getting used to using these numbers. Um, and it takes a little while, but eventually you'll kind of have an intuitive sense of like which number represents which thing. So these, for a circle and a rectangle, you have the XY position, so you can move it back and forth or up and down and then you have the size, so you can make it bigger or smaller. And then for the lines down here, we start with x, y, so there's x, y, and then x, y. So there's one pair and then a second pair. Okay, so let's go over one more shape that uses points rather than um, an origin and a width and height. And that's one of the trickier ones, it's the triangle. So we can use the triangle uh, maybe to make the face. If I put like, um, let's see, over here, here, and down here somewhere. It's gonna be kind of a weird face, but we'll just use this as a starting point. So the triangle is hard because you're connecting three different points that might be in totally different places. Um, so we're just gonna to try to guess and then we'll move it around a bit. So I'm actually gonna put this up here, which is another uh, good thing to, to note is that if I put the triangle down here, it's going to go on top of everything. We don't have anything overlapping right now, but the order that the things are drawn in is it draws whatever you write first first. So that's why the background is behind everything. If I took this background and put it down here, then it's going to be in front of everything, which is obviously not what we want. So I'm going to take that out. So let's go up here and I'm going to put the face and it's going to be a triangle. And I'm just gonna kind of guess to start because we're gonna have to move stuff around. So the first point, oops, I spelled triangle wrong. So first point is gonna be somewhere around here. Uh, so it's a low Y value, X is like kind of in the middle. So maybe do like 400 and like 50. 
and then x is going to go up a lot from here to here, but y is going to stay about the same. Um, so we'll go to like 600x and maybe like 60y. So that's the second point. And then the third point is down here somewhere. So y is going to be really big and x is going to be in the middle. So in between is like 500. High y value might be like 300. So we can reload that. Okay, so that's pretty good. I might want to move this guy down here a bit. Uh, this one I think is fine. And I'm going to want to move this point down a bit. So uh, let's move this down to like 400. Okay, that's a little too far. So let's do like 360. Okay, and then I want to move this point over. So we'll do like 380. So that can be a tricky one because you have three different points that you have to work with. Um, but once you get the basic shape down, you can kind of move the points around so you get what you want. So those are some of the basic functions. You can see from the P5 reference that there's actually a whole bunch of other ones, um, like the arc, uh, which is like a circle with a little pie slice cut out of it. Um, that one's a bit trickier. Um, the quad is, a, is like a triangle in that it has points, but it's more like a rectangle in that there's four points. Uh, there's also really complicated ways to make shapes, like the um, begin shape. Uh, this doesn't have very good examples, but here you can see kind of a more complicated sh shape. Um, we may go over those in future lessons. Um, there's also Bezier shapes, so you can use curves and stuff like that. So. Um, you might want to take a look at those, but they get a lot more complicated pretty quickly. So you might want to stick with the primitives just for this first example.